Circling back once more to our top story, and that is Singapore's first underground service reservoir in an estate will be completed in the next few months as the country meets its rising water needs. Now, the reservoir, which is situated in Bidadari, will serve close to 9,000 households. And here to share more on this is Angela Ko, Director of the Water Supply Network Department at the National Water Agency at PUB. Oh, welcome, Ms. Ko, to the show. Now, I'm wondering, first of all, how and why Bidadari was chosen to be the pilot? Um, so to actually test the concept of this uh, underground service reservoir, um, we have to actually work with other agencies. And so we saw this opportunity when Bidadari Estate came about. And uh, the, the whole planning as well as the construction uh, has to be done at the onset of the entire development. Mm. Um, so when, when this opportunity came, uh, we raised this with URA, uh, HDB, as well as NPARCS uh, to explore this possibility of building this water infrastructure to cater to this demand that we have and um, to build it together with the whole estate. Right, so you, that means you got in on the ground uh, early enough in the project yes. to actually work together on this. Um, I was wondering also, are underground service reservoirs functionally different from those that are above ground? How are they different? So maybe I will try to explain mm. how the high ground yep. service reservoir works. So in Singapore, all our service reservoirs today are on high ground, mm. right? Um, so uh, the service reservoirs are used to store the water that uh, we treat from our water treatment plants before we pipe them to the consumers. Um, so we store them high ground because we need the pressure to maintain this entire pressure, a uh, very consistent pressure across our entire water network. And uh, because it's on high ground, uh, the water then flows to the consumers via gravity. Yes. So uh, in the typical service reservoirs, we do not need any pumping. Yeah. Uh, in the case of uh, Bidadari, mm. uh, underground service reservoir, we call it the USR in short. Um, it's quite different, it's underground. And because it's underground, uh, what we do then is that we actually... Uh, boost the water pressure only during the peak hours of usage. Mm. So this typically mm. happens around the morning peak, mm -hmm. uh, which is about 6 to 10 mm -hmm. a.m., as well as the evening peak, uh, which is also about the same timing in the evening. And uh, during this time, we will then activate the pumps, yeah. and then we will then uh, send this water to consumers. Outside of these hours, then what we do is that we actually use the storage tanks to collect the water from the high ground service mm -hmm. reservoirs that's upstream, mm -hmm. Um, and then we bring this and then we store the water so that there's sufficient water uh, the very next time that we need to use it during the peak hours. Okay, yeah. that, that was a, a very clear ex ex explanation. Uh, also, uh, Ms. Ko, what were some of the engineering challenges that you faced or your team faced uh, when they were uh, building this project and how were they addressed? And as we spoke, one of the challenges that, that, that really stood out to me was that even the underground is... Packed. There is no space underground. So, what are some of the other challenges? So, so typically, if we build, uh, if we have a new demand center, like mm. a new estate, right? Mm. We will have to lay the water pipes to bring the water to this new estates. So, as you mentioned, um, the underground is actually very congested in Singapore. So, finding space for this water pipe in itself yeah. is a challenge. And so, with this, we decided that we wanted to test this concept of building the service reservoir right at where the estate is. Um, so, when we were doing this, of course, there's a lot of challenges. Uh, one of it, of course, uh, this project started during the COVID period. Yeah. Uh, so, I think in, in most of the other construction mm. projects in Singapore, we all face the same problems. So, shortage of manpower at that time, and there was also a construction materials delay. And so the project was sort of delayed because of these. Um, beyond that, I think this uh, project calls for a lot of uh, coordination with the other agencies, because you imagine the entire Bidadari, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, HDB was trying to build their flats and NPARCS was trying to build the parks. Yes, yes. Right? And there's a lot of construction ongoing. So we were all trying to coordinate and work together. And of course, uh, ultimately, it's really for the purpose of trying to optimise mm. uh, whatever land that we have in Singapore. Uh, so in this case, um, then we had the tank underground. And on top of the tank, we actually have the uh, park so that we can use the park. So again, a lot of these require uh, sequential construction. Yes, yes, we'll build the yes. tank and then the end parks will come in later. Yeah, yeah. so uh, just, just for my clarity, it needs to be under uh, at Bidadari, at the estate, less pipes, right? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. Um, 
You explained just now the difference between existing reservoirs using gravity to pump water into the cu customer's house. Bidadari does it the opposite way around. They pump up. So I assume a lot of energy is needed, even though it's just during the peak hours, you still need energy. Yeah, so, um, so because this is the first time we're mm. doing it, so we think it's a good opportunity for us to learn um, and uh, evaluate the concept. Uh, there will be some pumping that's required. Mm. Um, of course, at the current initial phase, uh, the, the planning is that we will do it for the peak hours. Uh, but our plan yeah. really is when we operationalize this, we will look at the actual uh, water demand data. So yes. our plan is really to further optimize the pumping and we may not need to pump the entire four hours. And so we'll look at the data and we'll further optimize. So that's our current planning. Okay, but you don't know how much it's going to cost just now because it's yeah. not operational yet. Yes, so that, exactly. that figure is still to come. Yes. But you are looking at ways to even minimize it further. Yes. Ah, okay. Um, where else beyond Bidadari would you like to see such underground concepts roll out? Where is there space elsewhere in Singapore? So I think, um, I, I think for us, the first thing is really looking for high ground. Whenever there's a demand, we'll look for a high ground, we'll build the service reservoir. Mm. Uh, really because uh, we can then use the water through uh, uh, gravity uh, rather than trying to pump. So that's, that's our first well, uh, instinct. If, if the opportunity arose, uh, is there well, another... If the opportunity arose, I guess uh, Bidadari, mm. uh, USR, will be a good learning experience mm. for us. Uh, we'll learn from there. Uh, there will be experiences that we can pick up. But we no can... other ones earmarked so far? Uh, we don't have any, any, any okay. of the rest earmarked at the moment. All right, yeah. all right. Yeah. But thank you so much. It's been so interesting hearing about uh, this entire project. Nine metres underground, I believe, you, yes. you told me yes. earlier. Thanks so much. I've been speaking with uh, Angela Ko, the Director of the Water Supply Network Department at PUB.